Welcome to this high-level demonstration on using the Enterprise Infrastructure Planning Tool, also known as the EIPT. The EIPT is a web-based tool that allows users to document and plan infrastructure rack deployments and to determine power, cooling, and weight requirements in the data center. You can access the EIPT via the following URL. Once you start the EIPT, you will be asked to provide some settings for your solution. When using this tool, the more accurate and complete the information provided, the better the results. With regards to the power usage effectiveness, you should check with the data center manager on the data center's level of efficiency and specify the appropriate PUE here. For this demo, we'll choose very efficient and enter 1.2 as the PUE. On the left navigation, you'll see the product catalog. Here is where you will choose products to place into the solution. Since we already have the rack servers category open here, let's add a PowerEdge R760 server. Click on the server and then select Add Product. This will place the product at the bottom of the rack. You can drag and drop the asset to properly position it in the rack. You'll notice that when an asset is selected, it will have a red border around it, and you'll see details about the asset on the right side of the interface. With the PowerEdge R760 server selected, click on the gear icon to configure this asset. Within the configuration panel, you'll have a limited configuration and a full configuration. Limited configuration only provides modules that will influence the power or thermal estimation. If you wish to put in the full configuration details for documentation and planning purposes, choose full configuration. Some modules will have an orange guide icon displayed. This provides assistance on choosing the best option for this module. We see the guide icon here under Power Supply. Let's click on it. This displays the Power Supply Guide to help you choose the appropriate option. Items in gray are not available. Those in white are available for selection, and the one highlighted in green is highly recommended. Let's choose the recommended PSU. Let's take a look at the full configuration. Here, you'll see all the components available for the chosen asset. As an example, you can change the server's processor. You can select the memory configuration and capacity. You can also add and remove drives. Let's add some drives to this asset. Make sure you click Done to save the changes. You'll see the additional drives here. If we want to remove some of the items, there is no need to edit the module. Simply click the trash bin icon to delete it. On the right, you can change the workload type. By default, the EIPT will set CPU loading to 100%. You can change this to a more appropriate load value. Notice that when we lowered the CPU load, the input power requirement reduced significantly. You can also choose other workload types such as memory intensive, which also has a high input power requirement. To see the least power consumption, choose idle. Let's take a look at a blade chassis and see how these are added to the solution. We can add the MX7000 blade chassis to the rack by dragging and dropping it to the preferred location. As a side note, for certain assets, you will get a list of action items here under the asset details. Some of these can be addressed by providing the appropriate information within the asset configuration, and some are action items that you should take note of during product configuration, ordering, and deployment. Since the MX7000 is only a chassis, we will need to add components to it. With the chassis selected, open the configuration panel. We can add a blade server here by choosing one from the dropdown. Let's add two PowerEdge MX760C blade servers into the chassis. You'll notice the blades added here. We can also rename this asset to better identify it in the solution. As we scroll down, you can see the Optimize Slot Assignments button. This allows the tool to reposition the blade servers for an optimal deployment. Since we only added the blade servers, we have not provided or seen the configuration. To view or change the blade configuration, select the blade and click the gear icon. This allows us to view the limited and full configuration just like with the other assets, and you can change the various options such as hard drives, processors, and memory configurations. You can also change the workload type and the CPU load percentage. Next, let's add a storage appliance. On the left side, choose Storage. The EIPT supports many asset types, including object storage and data protection appliances. However, let's try doing a search instead. Click on Search Catalog. Let's search for and add a PowerStore 3200. 
we can add the base unit as well as an expansion shelf into the rack. To configure this storage, select it and click on the gear icon on the right. We can add or change the drive types and sizes from here. If you need to specify the data reduction ratio for documentation purposes, you'll need to go to the full configuration and you'll see DRR here where you can select the expected data reduction ratio. Note that this is for documentation and internal tracking purposes only. From the right, you can specify the ambient temperature in the data center. Notice that with a higher temperature, the input power requirement increases significantly. Let's close this and have a look at the expansion shelf. For an expansion shelf, there is not much to configure except for the quantity and drive sizes. Let's update the quantity of drives to 10. Notice the increase in input power requirement as well. Now, what if you need to add a certain product into the solution that is not included in the product catalog? You can add this asset by adding a black box product. Click on Add Black Box Product from the product catalog. Here, you can specify the size of the product in rack units, the input power requirement, the input current, the product weight, sound power level, and airflow rate. The more information you provide, the more helpful it will be for the environmental calculations. Let's put in some specifications here. If you select the black box, in this case, the test machine, and choose the configuration icon, you'll open up the same configuration dialog box. Notice that the new black box was placed into a new rack. We can move other assets to the second rack. You can automatically add another rack into the solution by dragging and dropping a product to an open space outside the rack. Let's try to add some switches. Click on networking. Let's choose from the data center switches and drag and drop an S5296 dash on switch to the first rack. Let's also add an S4048T switch to the second rack. If we need multiple switches, we don't need to keep dragging and dropping it to the rack. We can click on the duplicate or clone icon in the asset details panel. Click create new clone. Here, you can specify how many clones you want to create. Each clone will have the same configuration as the original, but they can be changed individually if necessary. If you don't need any of the assets that have been included, you can select the asset and on the Asset Details panel, click on the trash bin icon to delete it. You've probably noticed that as you added assets into the solution and configured their modules, the rack environmental information is being updated here automatically. If you need to change any of the metrics, like the local utility rates used to calculate the energy cost, you can click on Solution Settings to display the same dialog box we saw at the beginning. To download the environmental details, save a copy, or share the configuration, you can export the solution using this link. Choose either the JSON or Excel format. We'll download both and see their uses. You can also start a new solution without closing the existing one. Go to Menu and select New Solution. You will now have Solution 1 and Solution 2 available, with Solution 2 being empty. Let's go to Solution 2 and import the configuration we exported earlier. From the menu, click on Import Solution. Choose the JSON file that we exported earlier. Now, Solution 2 has the same configuration as Solution 1. Let's take a look at the exported Excel file. Here you'll see all the environmental details from the configured solution. If you wish to see the same output directly from the EIPT, you can toggle the switch to Bill of Materials and you'll see the same details from the Excel report. We hope you find this useful. Thank you for using the EIPT.